Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Dawn here. So today I'm going to be doing a mixed media project. I'm going to do um, a shadow box using this scroller box that, um, well, using the packaging from the scroller box that I received. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it down here. Um, I'm going to use this for dimension and then what I'm going to do, now the next bit is going to be on speed up, um, I'll come back when I colour it um, and we'll talk through it but I'm going to go and get things like buttons and um, resin pieces, my wooden elements, just other little bits and we're just going to sort of build something up on here. Um, so I will put that bit on speed up because if I do the whole thing, the, the, the whole video is going to be really, really long. Um, so I think it would be nice if we just did it, um, if I did this bit on speed up and then we come back and I do all the colouring with you and I'll explain what I've done. So yeah, that's the plan. So we're going to make a mixed media project using um, some packaging, um, which is perfect to do a um, shadow box with. So um, if you want to keep on watching, then please do. Um, and I will see you when we start colouring.
okay so I'm back um right so what you will have seen you will have seen that um, I painted the box white I was just using some um, white gesso I've then covered the whole of the box in lace to give me this absolutely gorgeous gorgeous texture and then to create um, my sort of focal point um, some interest I've just used buttons so um, I've done like sort of a, a I don't know, I've just randomly put, well I want to say randomly put them down, but I've just sort of put them in clusters, just um, in three parts really. So there's this part, this part, and then we've got this little part over here. Um, and then I had some of this diamante trim, which I thought would be really, really nice as like a little bit of extra texture. And then just a little bit of... Um, chipboard as well I've given everything a coat of gesso so everything is nice and coated so what we're going to do is I think that um, I'm still sort of trying to decide what I'm going to use but I've just realized I have some absolutely gorgeous um, paints from um, a craft box which I think I want to use so I know I want to add the souffle onto this so um, I'm definitely going to use that um, I'm just wondering do I want to use like oh, I don't know I don't know people um, okay right I'm just going to pull out um, all of my little 13 art paints I think and paints that I've um, acquired from uh, craft box as well because I've had them for such such a long time that um, yeah I think it is a time that I started using them up because I did end up having um, to bin quite a few I'm just grabbing them out I don't know what color they go for yet um, so you sort of seeing my I, I thought I'd fill in this bit so that you could see my um sort of my thought process on how I decide my colours and um how I decide my products. So like I said at the minute I'm choosing um a craft box products, I'm choosing my 13 arts products um because I haven't used them for such a long time and it is you know we need to use what we have. Um otherwise you do just end up bidding them and it is such a shame so um so that's what i'm going to do um just having a quick look i think that's it um right i do have the lumiere planes which again i haven't used for such a long time but i'm thinking because all of these are acrylics um, I'm loving this turquoise so this is a paint by 13 arts and i think that would be quite nice um now i have two of these um for some reason so that one's open um i think i did blue that one isn't so um let's pop that away but I, i'm sure i did blue last time i'm thinking that what about this purple i know this has been opened um and that looks as though it's still okay so how about we do purple with a bit of this strawberry milkshake if it's if the paint is okay and it looks to be um, I might bring in some of this summer peach um, and it's all crumbly as you can see because I'm not using them but that'll just give us some texture so yeah let's use that um, I think I want to add, I might add in a bit of this a turquoise, um, we do have silvers and stuff, uh, that's got, that's white with glitter so we'll pop that in there and this is one of my favourite ones and I can't get it and as you can see, I don't know if you can see, that is like gone really super super thick um, but yeah, let's use that as well, right okay so that is how I've decided so it's just really having a look to see what I have and basically where we go from there. So we need a couple of paintbrushes. So I just grab a few. Um, okay, that should be, I don't think we'll need all of these, but um, I have them. Um, I am 
yeah let's use one of these ones so I'm going to start off actually with my lightest colour so let's start off with this acrylic paint and this is strawberry milkshake but any pink would be fine um, but like I say you need to start using um, what you have so I'm really going to get in there and coat all of this like in areas little bits so I'm wanting it to sort of be lighter in the centre and then go out dark. So that's what I'm um, looking for. So just like this. And I think that's the husband whom. So yeah, so this bit's going to be a nice pink. Okay. So you don't really need, and I think that's the one thing um, with acrylic paints, when you're doing something like this, you don't actually need a lot of paint. Um, a little goes quite a long, long way. Okay, so I have that. Oh, we've got a little lady shaking a bum because daddy's home. Oh, right, I'll be back in one second. Okay, sorry about that. Right, so next one I'm going to bring in is a summer peach. So, and it is sort of drying up, which is a bit of a shame because it is a lovely, lovely colour. But like I said, this is because I haven't been using these products. So I'm just going to build that in and just all the way around. Now, it's not going to blend very well because I've left that pink paint to dry. Um, but we are going to come in with the pink paint again and um, use it to um, give a nice transition between the two so um, at the minute I'm just getting the colour on where I would like it so if you do leave your piece to dry while using acrylic paints then it's not the end of the world we can still um, deal with it so which is really really good okay so just getting that in so it's not looking like much right now, but trust me, it will. Okay, so now I'm going to keep that open. Let's bring in this gorgeous purple. So this is Iris. And I'm going to bring this in. And as you can see, because it's still wet, it is mixing really nicely with that peach colour. So take advantage of that. And just all the way around and getting in everywhere so I'm going to be doing some dry brushing on this once it is dry um, just so that we bring out all of that detail that we have um, all the texture everything that we've put on so I'm just really digging that in making sure that it's nicely um, covering everywhere. Okay, I really, really like that. Right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab another paintbrush. I'm going to grab the pink and then we're going to just... Oh, this paintbrush is actually really, really solid, so I can't use that one. So use this one. Um, and then we're just going to go around and just build up that pink in with that peach um, so that we blend it out really, really nicely. So there's no harsh lines because the last thing you want is those harsh lines. You want it to sort of blend quite nicely together. So as you can see, it is blending really nicely. So we're just working that out. And then I'm gonna go into that purple <coughs> and just blend all of that together there. Much, much happier with that. Oh, that looks lovely, doesn't it? Right, just gonna bring in a bit more of the pink. And it will be a different colour because we've got that purple on, but that's fine. Oh, love it. Right, I just want a bit of orange. Well, peach. Um, really nice colour. And really work that in as well. So, just like that. 
great. R much, much happier with that blend. I think that blend just looks lovely. So I'm just going to... Right, okay, so now that we've done that, um, right, give me one second, I need to let the lady in. Right, okay, so she was outside playing in the snow, being as cute as ever. Now, the last colour I'm going to bring in is I'm going to bring in this uh, grey. And as you can see, it's really, really stiff. Um, and that's just because I haven't been using it. Um, but hopefully we can still... Um, it means I have to work a little bit more with it. Um, and it is nearly run out. So I think this might end up being the last time I use it, which is such a shame because it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so when you get your products, please, please do use them um honestly so um i'm gonna grab i'm just gonna grab my water and spray that just with a little bit of water just to help that move a little so i'm making sure you can sort of see um so i'm just wanting to cover the whole of the sides with that gray like this um, so it's all nicely coloured. So I'm going to do that all the way around. So um, because I am having to work a lot harder at this grey colour, um, just because it is a lot thicker, um, what I'll do is I'll go off camera and colour all the way around the edges with the grey and then I'll come back. Okay, so I've done that. Oh, hang on. <laughs> I've actually, I'm watching our lovely Julia and I've just realised as I turned that on. Um, so she was live with uh, Crafting With All Brands over on Facebook. So I was watching her while I was doing all of the grey. So it did take some doing, but with the help of water, I managed it. So I've literally just coated it around. I haven't done any blending on anything because I thought I'd do that with um, you on here. So I'm just bringing in my purple and we're just going to blend that in to the grey and really get in everywhere so just like this so really really making sure that it's all nicely blended together and we've got that hint of purple um, within the grey so it just all blends out nicely I mean how gorgeous does that look Right, I'm just going to grab some of the peach and I'm wanting to really blend this in with the um, the purple. So, And I do swirly motions with it. I find that when I do swirly motions, so I do it all in swirls, I get into all of the little tiny sort of nooks and crannies within the piece um, and it just gives it yeah better coverage rather than just going up and down so um yeah i tend to go um more swirly motion than i do um up and down so you'll you'll notice that in most of my mixed media pieces especially when there's a lot going on or a lot of texture that i've sort of built up as well okay so there's that which i just think is looking absolutely gorgeous and i'm just going to come back in with the pink and we're going to blend that together um again and i'm have you i mean as you'll have noticed i'm not changing my book so my my book my brush um so my pink is going like a gray color but that is fine it means that it's all blending nicely together um, and this is how we end up with our nice little blend. I mean, how gorgeous does that look now? Isn't that just beautiful? Please do use what you have, but um, get used to going in swirl motions. Um, so get used to sort of really pushing down your brush, getting into all of those nooks and crannies and really coating your piece. Um, yeah, and just go around and give it, yeah. A nice coat and the good thing about using acrylic paint is you can build it up over and over and over again until you get the coverage that you want and so you've seen there that I've just done um, about three different coats using each different layer um, and 
I mean by doing that we've ended up with um, exactly what we were hoping for and um, which was a nice blend so what if it doesn't look right the first time that's because you've got to build up your layers so keep on going keep um, doing those layers and just keep it may, it might take um, three layers it could take six layers um, it all depends on how you go so that is that and I'm really, really loving how it's looking. So I don't think, um, I'm gonna keep this gray, hopefully it won't dry out anymore. I might mix it with water so that it lasts a bit longer, because it is gorgeous. But like I say, um, use your products because you don't want to end up where, I mean, these products are drying out because I'm not used to them. And it's such a shame because, I mean, look at that, that's a beautiful piece of art. So, um, yeah, so hopefully you will see more of these paints um, so that I actually use them. Now I need to get some water um, and pop them in. Right, I'm gonna go off camera, I'm gonna dry this and then um, I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back, right. Um, I've got a few bits out of my stash, so I have this gorgeous heart that came in a mixed MDF um, pack that I'd bought from Facebook, if I remember rightly, about three or four years ago. Um, and then this butterfly came from um, the works and I just thought, how cute does that look? Um, I also have some flourishes from Samantha K, um, as well as some leaves, which I thought we could maybe have coming out. And then I have all of these, which are, um, they are all, um, oh, what do you call them, flowers. And I thought instead of using my usual flowers that I would use, I maybe use these ones. So they're the ones that you roll up yourself. Now, we will have to um, color them. So I'll let it get some white. So I'm going to just get a few different coloured ones out. Well, of all the sort of plainer colours, because I don't want any of the blues. Or, although that turquoise colour, but I don't think I've got any in the... Yes, we have. Okay. Right. So we have lots and lots of them. Um, and I just thought these would look really, really nice um, as our flowers um, on here. Um, and you could quite easily make these as well yourself. Now I'm just looking for my tweezers. So all you do is just pinch the end with some tweezers and then we're going to roll it. So these, I actually got um, quite a few sheets of them um, and there was about well I want to say there's a minimum of six on each sheet and I actually got them from my local charity shop so I do have a haul somewhere on my channel of me buying these and they weren't very expensive at all um, but I mean it was last year sometimes so it is quite nice to use them so that's what I'm sort of thinking but then I have some sprays there and I thought how nice would it be if we spray them and yeah so make them so that they match i've got um i've got some um we've also got some mica powders as well so i could always use those but yeah i've got um i've got a purple spray micro spray spray sorry from um craft box which i could use so this one is a nice giant one so again and just using these tweezers really, really helps. Now I am going to plug in my um, heat gun for these because it really, really is going to make a difference. But, so we can glue them down. But how nice is that? So that's what I'm thinking is that we use these and I think that might be quite nice to add these in. So before um, I glue all of them together, um, I am going to colour in the butterfly and I'm going to colour in the heart. Um, so first things first, so let's grab my glue gun and plug it in, so that's now um, heating up, but what I'd like to do, now I'm not going to prime these, so you would normally prime these um, with gesso but you don't actually have to it depends on how vibrant you want the color look at that paint isn't that just gorgeous now it does need mixing up because the mica is at the bottom of it so give it a nice good stir so as you can see oh isn't that just beautiful you can see the the mica just being moved around in that 
I'm hoping it's coming up on camera because that just looks amazing. So there is a ball in there to, to mix up but you know it's just nice to actually see the change of it. So it was quite a nice dull colour and then just by mixing it. So the one thing with um, Craftbox products you do have to mix them well, like really really well for them um, to get the full effect. So this is, what's this one? This is a sparkle paint and it is a lagoon. So and that's what we're using. So make sure I get really really good mixing on it. So there, like, like wipe all this excess off. And then I'm just going to oh, look at how gorgeous that is. It's super, super sparkly. So this is going to require a couple of coats. Um, I'm definitely going to require a couple of coats. Um, but I think I definitely want to get, do the whole piece. I won't do under the underneath because you're not going to see it. Um, but we'll just do thin layers. So we'll start off with a thin, well, it'll all be thin layers. So we just sort of go around doing um, our layers. So I reckon maybe two or three quarts of this um, and it'll just make it absolutely stunning. So I think it's going to look amazing. So what I'm going to do, just because um, I don't want the video to be too long, I'm already not sure how long this video is going to be, um, so I'm going to go off camera and um, I'm going to do all of this so we're going to coat it um, and I'll keep coating it until I've got the coverage I want and when I come back I'll tell you how many um, coats I've had but I'm reckon I reckon three coats and it'll be a beautiful beautiful blue colour so I'll be back in a moment okay so I'm back right um so this did take three coats and look at that doesn't that look absolutely gorgeous so that is just going to sit there um just at the bottom and then I have put two coats of the silver onto the butterfly but I just think that looks really really beautiful we are going to do some white gessoing on here before um, I do stick anything down um, but what I've done is um, I've taken the flowers um, while I was off camera and I have put them all together um, and glued them down and what I want to do is I've got this um, Lumi paint in purple um, that's if I can open it I may have to go and get oh no there we go um, so just with what's in the lid of um, this is I just want to sort of brush it over um, the flowers just to give um, a hint of that purple and a little bit of sparkle. I'm also going to um, pop on some of the souffle as well but I think I'll add the souffle on when um, once these are stuck on but yeah I just want to sort of I'm not being um, a very careful but as you can see it's like just really really roughly putting um, the purple on and it's just to help tie it all together so um, it's like really dry brushing with the Lumi paints I mean this Lumi paint is absolutely um, gorgeous so um, I just want hints of it on the flowers. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to use all of the flowers yet um, but I've just put enough together so that um, yeah I I'll have enough there. Um, I think I don't think I'm going to do them all actually I think I'll just stick with that. Um, actually I want to do this one so a little bit more. I'm just wondering because this Lumi paint is gorgeous as if we just do a little bit of dry brushing with this. Well, I say dry brush and then dump a load in my, um, yeah, onto my brush. I'm just going to rub it over um, just a little bit, just so that we've got those little sparkly areas. Um, I mean, I am going to go over my white, so we're going to lose a lot of um, this, but where I've sort of put it in that background, we get to keep it. Um, but yeah, it just gives it that nice sparkle because the paints that I've used are a chalk paint so it's come out a nice chalk finish. Um, so we've just got some little um, bright areas so I'm just sort of going in and just putting it where I feel really. Um, I'm going to put quite a bit I think on the sides so yeah let's do that. Um, so just going along these side walls um, just to bring in a little bit of interest um, 
Now I am using my lid and when you use the Lumi paints, um, if you have them, you do have to keep mixing them. Um, it, there is advised um, to tip them out, um, tip it a little bit out, but I find that if I use it in my lid, I'm not wasting any of the product um, by trying to tip it back in. So yeah, so that's all I'm doing, just like that. Right, so, oh, I love that. Isn't that just gorgeous? Okay, so let's close this up because I don't need that now. I'm just going to pop that brush in my water because, again, I don't want it or need it. Um, right, make sure that's in frame. Now, I am going to come in with my... So this one's nearly run out. However, um, it's not one that I like to do dry brushing with. Um, I much prefer my 13 Arts. But you can dry brush with any... Um, any gesso that you have or even just some white acrylic paint um, would work as well so I'm just having a small amount on my brush um, and then I'm just with a flicking motion I'm going to go over the top of all of that um, so I'm holding it quite far up um, yeah and you just want to start off with a little and you just keep working that in until you've got the coverage that you want and you've brought out that um, that texture that you want to bring out. So as you can see, it's um, just with that first layer, it is coming out quite nicely. I mean, look at that in that corner. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? It's really picking up all of that gorgeous, gorgeous lace. And that's what I'm wanting. Uh, to happen so I'm wanting all of that texture to be um, highlighted because um, oh, I just think it's gorgeous so I'm just doing a flicking motion very little on my brush um, and I'm just building it up I'm not um, putting loads on and the best result is if you go in layers because you can always um, add more but you can't take um, any off so my advice is a little um, do small amounts and build those layers up so as you can see I mean that's just looking absolutely gorgeous but it really does make a difference now dry brushing isn't for everybody um, at all so just so that you are aware um, you don't have to do this it is personal preference now I'm just going around the edges just to pick up some of the the lace detail as well around the edges so um, yeah it definitely isn't for everybody but um, for me personally um, I just think it really really finishes off a background um, and really brings out all of that gorgeous gorgeous lace so Oh, I just love it and like I say I, I like to do in layers um, because then you can keep it building up to the level that you would like um, whereas if you just go straight on with it the chances are you're just going to cover up the colour that you've built up um, when you first started so my advice is little and, um, and just, yeah little amounts and um, lots of layers and keep going until you are happy with the um, the level of coverage that you're going for and sometimes you don't know I mean I never know what lev um, level I'm going for um, I just keep going until I'm happy with the piece um, you can overdo dry brushing um, and I have done on many occasions um, however um, I don't know you get to know what your uh, preferences and you get to know a feel for the piece that you're working on so you sort of I don't know um, it's instinct I suppose it's it's um yeah it's a feel for the project so it's it's feeling whether or not um, you want to do um, yeah now <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that but the front room telly is really really loud so I'm gonna go and ask them to turn that down um, but yeah I think that is about right so I'll be back in a second okay sorry about that um right so that to me is finished I don't want to add much much more to that um I'm not even going to add anything else onto my brush I'm just sort of blending it over now where we added the Lumi paints just here I mean you can see it's got like a, a little shine to it I'm hoping the camera is bringing it up let me see if I bring my lights 
further in so you can sort of see um but you've got like that shine oh, i just think that looks absolutely gorgeous right put my brush in the water because we don't need that so and the plan is i'm wanting to add this on um probably around about there so that's where i think this is going to go and then um, I have the butterfly. Now I haven't decided whether I want the butterfly in the centre or if I want it on top of here. I don't know yet. Um, but I know that that's where I would like um, my butterfly to go. So I just have some um, gel medium here. Um, and there's not much left in this tub. But there should be enough for what we need it for. So I'm just going to go around and put this on. And I'm going to use a bit of my... I'm going to use my gel medium and I'm going to use my glue gun. So the gel medium is so that it permanently sticks. Um, and the... Um, yeah, the... Uh, glue gun is so that it adheres um, straight away now I've had lots of questions asking what, what um, gel medium is the best um, truthfully I think they're all the same you've got different types so you've got heavy bodied um, gel medium which is very similar to the one that I'm using and I would highly suggest doing the heavy bodied one because um, it's more solid and so much easier to put on so you can put it on big lumps which means that you can really get the gel medium where you want it to go. So definitely, definitely suggest um, a heavy body one. So if you, if you can um, get hold of one. Um, and you can get sort of liquid ones. They're, more, they're much better for like if you put paper on. So if you, if you are working in mixed media, you want a gel medium that um, is heavy bodied. Um, there is quite a lot. I mean that, as you can see, it's not runny at all. It's more like a paste. Um, so this is 13 arts so if you could get 13 arts here in the UK then definitely go for it because I do find it to be a really really nice one um, I know Marta Lepowska that she uses this from Marami Small Arts which is where um, I got it from but I have used um, Pebio ones I've used Dina Wakely um, I've used yeah there's and they're all just as good as each other so um yeah i would just whatever your price point is just look for um a gel medium that um is heavy bodied or um yeah i mean it doesn't have to be heavy body the the one that i got first of all wasn't it was um like a, a liquid and it worked perfectly fine the, I, I didn't have any issues with it at all but i do prefer prefer to work with one um that is more like a paste so so yeah so i would say um it's entirely um yeah have a look at your budget whatever your budget is and sort of work from there um because i think that is where you're going to sort of um and go with that i'm loving that um so yes yeah, so i hope that helps um if i remember to i'll leave some links in um if i haven't please do let me know because i'm so so bad and i know that you tell me on every video um because i do forget um but yeah just um i'll leave some links to a few that um yeah that i don't mind so um and then hopefully i mean you can either choose one of them um or you can um yeah try and um but look at reviews as well reviews on um i, I think a pretty pretty accurate she does a gel medium and our, our julia absolutely loves it so if i remember rightly i will leave a link for that uh, for the pretty gets gritty one but i think you can only buy that off her chanda um but it is a really nice one to use i've personally not used it um so i'm just going off the word of our lovely julia but um yeah i know that um that is a good one um so yeah um so i would just say whatever your budget is sort of go within that okay i'm loving that i'm looking up there i love these flowers so i'm going to keep it like that so i've just got my glue gun now these i'm not going to stick down with gel medium because they're just paper so this will my glue gun will work lovely with it so i'm just going to stick them down definitely want to add these in there because i think they look really really nice and just yeah why not um and then like i say what i'm going to do is i am going to add some souffle to it because i love the souffle um right i need to grab another couple of glue sticks so they're just above my desk 
Right, put them there for now. And then, so like I said, just going to stick these down. And I like the um, the addition of this gorgeous green colour. So the turquoise green and the turquoise. I just think that looks really, really nice together. Oh, come on. In you go. There we go. And then, yeah, put that in there. So I might have to leave my glue and just to do. I think as well, I've got some pearls here. So I'm thinking I might add some pearls in as well. I think that might look nice. Okay. And then go there. Um, but I mean, you can add gel medium to this if you would like to. Um, but yeah, like I said, this is just paper, so the chances are my, my glue gun's gonna stick it. I would highly, but um, it's more for bits and pieces like um, metal embellishments. Um, this is a big, heavy wooden embellishment, so things like that, you want them to sort of permanently stay. So um, yeah, that's why I would definitely say um, gel medium is something to invest in. But um, I will try, I, I already know I'm gonna forget. Um, I, f I seem to forget quite a lot of things lately, but yeah, um, oh, I just love that butterfly. I am actually tempted to have it just like that in the centre. Oh, I like it there as well, but I really like it like that. And do you know what I like? I like the fact that you can just, just oh, we're going to keep it there. Right, with this, um, I'm not going to use my glue gun. Um, and just for the simple reasons, you're going to be able to see it. So I am going to come in with my um, gel medium. Um, and we're going to just put it on um, here. So I'm just going to dab it. Um, you can use it, but you could use wood glue for this. Wood glue would be fine because it is wooden embellishments. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I'm not saying that um, to do a mixed media piece, you have to use gel medium. I mean, you could just use your glue gun, but um, you just need to be made aware that it could end up um, falling apart in a few years to come. So it is something that you need to be um, made aware of. Okay loving that so i'm just going to stick that down and then i'm just going to brush all that excess off because we don't want those bits to be seen okay so just doing that and then okay i like that now i did have some flourishes and i have some words um but i'm going to use i might use that i don't know yet but I've got the word amazing, which I thought might be nice. But I do have these gorgeous flourishes that I think would look really, really nice. <coughs> sort of coming out. Um, so these ones are from Samantha K. Um, so she does absolutely gorgeous gorgeous chipboards mdf pieces yeah just absolutely beautiful so do um check her out right where's my scissors oh there they are because i'm thinking let's cut these down don't be afraid as well to just cut into them um yeah i like that okay and then have that piece so I'm just wanting them dotted around really. Um, here, there and everywhere. Okay. And then this bit, which I think will be nice, just took that. And then we've got two more bits, so maybe. Oh, I quite like that piece there. And um, let's see. Mm, that needs just to be a bit shorter in there. Yeah, right. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue on there. And we're just going to stick that in there. So it's just in that corner. Um, and I'm only putting a, a tiny amount of my glue gun on. So. Um, but because I'm, I'm making sure that it's well hidden and I like the loose bits on it as well make that look a bit neater 
take that bit out. Here we go. So again, a little bit. And pop that on. So just going all the way around, sticking these bits on. Um, and again, it just, if you haven't got anything like this, you could use Seasal. Seasal is a good thing. That would work really, really nicely. So that's what you get in florists. Um, and yeah, it would definitely, definitely look gorgeous on this. Um, you could also use some string, um, some twine or something as well. So do little bows with them. Oh, I like that. So there's, there's other things that you can use okay so the last thing is i have um this word pack um and this um says amazing so um because i think everybody should just be amazing no matter what so and that i think i'm going to go there but i'm looking at it thinking it needs it to be colored which is very rare because i don't normally color them however we're going to color this and i'm going to color it with um <coughs> this lumi paint so let me just wash my brush and i'm going to mix this because it always needs mixing before use okay now this is a nice thin paint so it just i'm hoping that one quart of it will be enough for what i need it to do um, but it's a gorgeous, gorgeous colour. Really, really sparkly. So there we go. So there's that. Let's get put the lid on so I don't spill it. Um, I'm just going to wipe down this section. And then what I'm going to do is bring back my piece. And oh, look at that. Straight away, that stands out so much better. However, I don't think I want to put it on the butterfly. I'm thinking just having it down there, either down there or up there, or not at all. Mm. I do like it. Oh, I think we need to put it in. Yeah, do we need it on? I mean, really? I just, I do like it, but you know when you're just sort of looking, thinking, do you really, really need it? Um, See, so I think it looks so much better there, or up there. Um, I'm probably thinking actually down there, and just leaving it as is. Yeah, do you know what? Because as most of you, I know there's a lot of you that probably say, no, you don't need to add it at all, but I don't know, there's just something that... Um, I just love adding a word to something so yeah it's gone there but I just don't think it needs to be on that butterfly so we're not putting it on um, I'm just using my gel medium just because it's out but probably um, just a normal PVA might be, work well with this and then I'm just going to stick it down the bottom and push that down so being careful because there's bits of it that is still wet so there we go so just like that right um let's close that up and then the last thing i'm going to do is i have this souffle and i'm going to use the rose quartz i think well i was going to use the rose quartz but um i don't think that's the color i want to now let's have a look i think i'm going to use the diamond so um let's grab a spatula so I'm just going to get a spatula and then we're just going to add in this and this is super super glittery so oh, it's going to just look amazing when it dries and it's one of my new favorite products so it is um, from Craftbox. Um, if you don't have this because um, I know that they are limited quantity so you've got to be quite quick to get stuff like this um but i know that um you can, well if you haven't got this you can just use um glitter glitter would be work just as well um so yeah so there is other bits that you can sort of choose okay just going to stick it all along now 
the thing to do with this is not to blast it to dry um, leave it to dry naturally because um, if you use it if you dry it using a heat tool you will end up with um, oh, what do you call it like a cloudy effect whereas if you leave it to dry naturally you get a clear effect so yeah oh, I love right and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sort of put bits coming out so building up some texture more texture um, but this time it's all um, sort of glitter so I'm just gonna build that up around like so and it just gives it more interest as well I'm going to turn it around because I can't quite see what I'm doing um, so yeah okay just in there like that really really pretty oh, I love it oh do you know what I'm going to do I'm just going to put some just across the bottom like that but yeah I like that and then I'm going to put some along the sides Um, and it's just to bring in that extra bit of sparkle. Okay, and then just along like that. So, yeah. I mean, you can use a brush to paint this on. Um, but I do like using my spatula to do it right. There's that. Now, I think that's the diamond, but I think I want to bring in my um, precious opal. Um, because we've got the thin and glitter. Um, and I am actually going to bring in my um, paintbrush with this one. And this is the one I want to paint onto the flowers. So all the flowers are going to get a nice little bit of glitter so they've got different glitter in them which is why I'm using two different ones so the other one's more like um, flakes this one is like small glitter with some hexagon glitter in I've got the fool's gold which has got really big um, chunks of glitter in which is just absolutely um, gorgeous so yeah um, got blue um, got quite a lot of different ones actually Okay, so just in like that, spreading it all around. So this, when it dries, is going to be super, super, super sparkly. So it's going to look amazing. Okay, so I think that's it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tidy up. I'm going to leave this to, to dry, and then once it's dry, we'll come back and we'll have a look at it. So yeah, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so here we are. So it's all dried really, really nicely. Now, I don't know if you're going to get the glitter on the butterfly and on... Let me see if I can sort of bring in my light just a little bit. Um, but yeah, you can sort of see all the glitter within all these little spots. How gorgeous is that? So there you have it. That is my piece all finished. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm loving it. <laughs> so I hope you love it too. Um, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And hopefully we'll see you very soon in another video. But yeah, I um, have to say I've definitely uh, loved doing this project. So yeah, I will leave it there. And yeah, see you in another video soon. Bye.